Today's episode is sponsored by the Bauer 2023 range. Now available in store and online at skatersnetwork.com.au. Sticks will be dropping on the 28th of July, but you can head in store to check them out right now. Hello and welcome to episode three of the Hockey Life podcast. Today we are joined by Zach Boyle, representative of the U18, U20, and men's national team, and also his eighth lead. Eighth year in the AHL this year. Zach, how you going? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Bit of a whirlwind tour uh, on the road and then uh, into the Skaters Network offices today. Yeah, it's been a quick turnaround, that's for sure. Not much sleep happening. <laughs> Very good. Now, Zach, I really want to know because, you know, I've seen you playing and, you know, I, I know you as a, as a mate, but I want to send it all the way back. Where did hockey come into your life? Uh, hockey came into my life uh, from my dad, actually. Uh, his uh, parents moved over to Canada when he was young, um, and that's where he grew up learning to play. And then once I was born, I was uh, hooked onto it. Whereabouts in Canada did he uh, did uh, he move to? Toronto. Okay, so was he a Leafs fan? Leafs fan. So did you inherit that? Yes, I did. Oh, <laughs> poor human. It's a tough time for It's you. a tough you're one, a, that's for sure. A bit of, uh, you're a bit of ma- masochistic tendencies to yep. you know, just love love going through that pain but i'm sure you guys will have some success. i say i'm not going to be doing it but every season rolls around like oh, it's going to be a different you get year G'd up again. Be, yeah. Yeah, we're good. so you we are a it. true leafs fan yeah. then <laughs> <laughs> the emotional roller coaster yeah. that is a leafs this fan. is our year no, no, it's not. No, no, no. i mean before we get stuck in i really need to ask the question what needs to happen at the Leafs? Come on, as a fan, I'm a fan by default. I used to carpool to work with Spencer Austin, who's like one of the biggest Die hard, die hard, die hard. Die so hard, hard like yeah. roped into the bandwagon of crazy. So, I mean, who are they trading and uh, what's going to happen? I don't know. Uh, they just, I don't know if they need better goaltending or better coaching. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the two. It's one of the two. Well, I mean, I they they. They changed the GM situation. Yeah. Do you think that was the right move, the wrong move? How do you feel about that one? I feel it was the wrong move, to be honest. Mm. They kind of forced him out. They didn't give him a chance to really get that team rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll figure it out I'm this sure. year. Oh, the pens will – we'll see how they, he and, goes with the pens. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Matthews, they're going to lock it down. What, what do you think is going to be his, uh, his contract? Oh, he's at least there for eight years. Yeah. At least I don't know the value. Hopefully it's a team friendly one. Yeah. You'd hope <laughs> I so. I doubt it. I doubt yeah. He's going to handicap. He's, he's going to cash he's, that one yeah. in. Yeah. It's if he's not winning a cup, he's cashing up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so Zach, born in Australia or born? Born in, in Australia. Yeah. And when did you start playing hockey? Jesus. As soon as I could learn to skate. Yeah. There's, I can't remember a time I really wasn't uh, either at the rink or... You know, playing hockey at home. That's epic. Yeah. And so, like, what was it like? What was kind of the hockey world like in Adelaide when you were growing up and, like, playing in different leagues and things like that? Like, how did it all work? Was there a lot of inline, a lot of ice, or was it hard to find a team? Uh, no, growing up, it was – well, we only had two – what, two teams in our peewee division, two teams in our bantam. Uh, yeah, right. Did jump on roller hockey for a little bit while I was young to get that little extra – Training time, game time, but then just gave that up to fuel, purely focus on ice. And like for for that junior level, when it's such a, like a small pool of talent there, did you have to play up just to get more ice time? Was that sort of something that, that you did to sort of elevate your game? Or did you sort of like the coaches see that you had potential to play at the next level? And they Well, that's if they allowed us to play up is the question. Oh, okay. There was a lot of that kind of almost – holding players back happening mm. they were saying well basically no one can go up like really a lot of parents were saying oh well, he's playing up why can't my child play up right so they okay. pretty much went no, no so you're telling me up. politics got involved politics in, got involved in hockey in, in australia <laughs> wow funny how that works yeah, it's funny yeah, how that, yeah, it, it i guess it's not just one state i guess it's no like it's all, all the of... states that's for sure oh that sucks man yeah but it worked hard eventually i did get to play up but it was gone into the adult league where then I couldn't play in that contact Premier League mm. until I was, I believe, 17. 16, okay. 17. Okay. So weren't even allowed to play up then, but was training with the adrenaline at the time. Yeah. And were you always like one of the better players in the, I don't know, 
it's a little hard. To yeah, it's like a, <laughs> but like if looking back, like were, was there was there like a, a group of guys that you grew up with that you all were like, you know, trying to make it to that next level? Yeah, there was a handful of us as like Romy McGinnis, Ryan Fole, Kane mm. Fedor, were all pushing ourselves. Like we're kind of that core that were in that age group that kind of had to keep pushing ourselves to get better. Yeah. Uh, other than that, there really wasn't many others. Yeah. And it, like, it shows those guys are like in, in the league and they've been yeah. around the AI for a while. So yeah. did, did having kind of like more of a tight knit hockey community and playing like, you know, consistently the same players, did that kind of put more of a, a really big importance on those state championships and things? Was that like a really big part of the calendar? Yeah. Well, it gave us a bit more on, Kind of enjoyment in hockey instead of us in the same team, like same team every weekend. Uh, it was good to come together, even though we didn't do good in those junior age groups. It was a lot of fun. I just, I just can't even imagine like just having the rivalries just getting yeah. worse and worse every oh, week. Yeah, like, <laughs> like at least when there's heaps of teams. <laughs> This guy this again. Guy. Like, <laughs> if you, if you just had a hate on for someone. You just had to oh. see their face like every day, day, week. Every yeah. practice, yeah. games. It was it was awful. There was definitely some uh, rivalry growing up yeah. between and us. Like, so, like, how was the training, though? Like, would you have separate training sessions or would you, like, share the share, ice? We would be sharing the ice. You're kidding. So, so you would have one training a week and everyone would come together. and would. So, if it was Peewee... Pee was just training at whatever it was, yeah, seven training, o'clock. It doesn't they'd matter be, what team you're on. Five forty-five, I think it was, or yeah. six o'clock. They'd all train together. Kind of hard to work on your power play. Where yeah, yeah, the, exactly. Like right. across the red line is the other team. Yeah. Like, or not even that. You're just doing drills together. <laughs> like you weren't even practicing as a team in those younger days. Wow. But I guess I mean that must have been a benefit, uh, you know, moving through into the older leagues because you knew all the players. Like you kind of yeah. know their style of play. You always kind of must be thinking like, I know what he's going to do. I'm going to move to here. And yeah, de- right it definitely choice. helped getting to those old age groups, especially with the AIHL. And we've already played against each other for years, and we've known what each other like playing styles are. Yeah. That is that is, that is super interesting because yeah. like I've I've obviously to have an experience that here in Sydney we had a little bit of more of a deeper pool but those what like what was it like in terms of like the doing the extra stuff away from those sessions like like you said you had that core group of guys yeah. who were who were putting in that work was it um, like stick and puck sessions were they pri- were there private lessons with like uh, older players in the AIHL because obviously you have those legends yeah. that are in that that age group above um, was there anything like that was it all yeah. just on your own we kind of had stuff? our own private group that we were trained with and we'd coach by Sammy mm. and would I think it was every Monday night we'd be on the ice it was only the smaller rink that we have in Adelaide mm. but it was huge on just battles skill drills skating like all edge work yeah that was just to get us to that next level to yeah to keep us up with the other states yeah that's kind of cool like yeah. shout out to sammy for doing that because yeah. like still does it to this day with the the next generation so he's still working hard on that yeah good on him because like yeah being in an environment like that just trying to find a way to get better is is a challenge so it's Very much. you got you just got to find a way to do it and you know all the like kids at home like if you're listening to this just find a way to get better just you know any opportunity that you can find some guys that are competitive or or girls that are competitive just like you and you know have an iron sharpening iron is usually the the best way to do it no matter what the situation is just get out there and do something whether that be like going to your local tennis court yeah just training park handling doesn't matter yeah and so talk me through 2014 first season with the adrenaline 2014, yeah, a long time ago. Do you wow. remember like those first training sessions, like you know, coming out and starting to play with those guys? I mean, you would have known them anyway because you're in the same rink. But yeah, was that like a big kind of progression in your hockey? That it was you a could bit see? of a fight to get out there, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like we had to fight our way out there. A lot of the players were pushing for us young kids to get out there, but the coaching staff at the time were like, no, mm-hmm. like we don't want these young kids out there. But that's probably why we haven't developed as well in Adelaide. A little bit of handicapping there. Um, but it was fantastic in and out. There was a whole another level. You kind of, yeah, almost out of your depth. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of, that's how it felt. And so like that, that season, that first year in it, what do you remember about kind of like ice time? What role were you playing? Like, you know, what, what so was it like? I was kind of in between that like transition of like D and Ford at the time. 
So just kind of where they need it. It was mainly sitting on the bench. You maybe get one, two shifts a weekend. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Like, so you just buy your time. You have to sit there, not say a word and just buy your time on the bench. And that's such a hard one because I feel like I definitely experienced it. Like when I came into it, I was sitting and I was training through the yeah. week and everything. But if I couldn't like have two games, like I would, that was my weekend. Like I would just sit and get maybe like one or two shifts. And it's like, you understand at the time that like you have to produce and like, you got to just capitalize on that. But then I always thought like, I could be developing more if I was playing, you know, a full game or whatever. But I guess once you're there, it's kind of like they were expecting at that time that you were just ready and like when you were called upon, you were going to have to perform. Yeah, exactly right. Which I didn't. Yeah. But <laughs> thinking back, I could have. <laughs> no, it is hard to perform though. Like when you're getting out there cold, your legs yeah. are tired, it's a third period and you're out there for a shift is, yeah. like, it's I hard to, for them to expect that. And you know what makes it even more hard? is I remember playing CBR and we were in their home barn, you know, the crowd's going nuts. There's people like sticking their tongue through the fence and, yeah. and it was a wonderful time. Yeah. But I remember lining up against this Finnish dude. He was big and he was real, he was a big skill guy. I was just like that token shift out there. And we were in our own zone and we we're at, like, I was at the inside uh, hash marks and he looked at me through my big HDO bubble visor and he goes, I am going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the puck no, he and did I'm going to go around no. you to the outside and I'm going to go top corner. And I was like, that's it. That's You've a- told me. You're, it's, you're over, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I know your I plan. Got you. I got you. <laughs> and then puck drops. He does exactly the opposite. Mm. Gets the puck. The only thing that was the same was he went top shelf. But yeah. that, <laughs> that taught me a lesson. Do not talk to the other team ever. <laughs> Don't let them get into your head. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget yeah. it. I was like, that was a that was a real pinnacle moment. That's some serious the, chirping yeah. in, on the uh, face yeah. off line, but yeah. like That's intellectual yeah. chirping right there. It was. Who yeah. d- who did you have as like your older guys um, on the blue line that were sort of like nurturing you in, into the league and getting more uh, adapted to the AIHL style? So it'd have been a, a David Huxley, Josh Harding. Uh, Sean Greer, mm. those are the guys I shout out to those guys. Shout out to those yeah, guys. Beauties. Uh, where I started off uh, learning how to play D or properly how to play D at yeah. that time as I was transitioning between, well, pretty much got forced to play D. Too many really? forwards, and it's just like, well. So that's why you played defense. So that's why I played so D. There was too the many. The switch happened as you came into the AI. AI, yeah. Oh. So is it just because you you kind of you kind of knew how to go backwards? So they yeah, were like, I, knew how I to guess skate backwards. I was like, that's it. What was Either it was like the coach was like, if you want ice time, we need defense. I mean, that's a common story. You got to think back to that time. All those stacked lineups, everyone was forward and vet. Like I remember that progression in when you were looking around, it was mostly like, you know, Brian, it was the D's coming in. And they were getting more ice time than a fresh forward coming out to be in it. I didn't see it like in today's game, like the AIHL is still forwards struggling to crack the lineup and we Mm -hmm. still haven't got enough D. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's room out there. There's room. It's it's on the blue line, and it's, if if you watch Boyle's game, you know that you can still score goals and, yeah. and be on the blue line. So don't don't let that stop you, um, especially now with how the game is played. Yeah. Like all five, um, all five players on the ice need to have some sort of um, offensive skill there. But yeah, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's pretty much how I got into playing like full time defense. It was like, well, we need D. So yeah, I want, and I wanted ice time. Yeah, adapt or die. Yeah, I love exactly that. Right. That's great. Yeah. I think that's probably the correct way to move into def- defense, really. Like, because if you think yeah, it the when, other when way, you're, like, when you're a kid you're a playing D, adults that yeah, know how to crush people, you're a boy that's, coming to play with man. Your first board battle, yeah, you might have been reconsidering your whole yeah, decision. Yeah, like, definitely. you have one of those, like, especially like back then. It's still that sort of like era of like transitioning to this like new style of yeah. the game. So you still had those like yeah, heavy yeah. players or just trying to like crush. Oh, you had crush, the whiteies, the, the Dunwoodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Like, and they, they were going to come and they, hit, they yeah. took one look at you yeah. and they just saw like like yeah. free meal. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Well, hey, paid off. Paid off. It definitely paid off. Paid off. Yeah. And so talk to me about the Blackhawks. So the Blackhawks, you were playing for them throughout. Is that 
summer is that is so that's our winter local league so once you come out of the bantam or out of that age of bantam the senior league has a draft yep so then you go into that draft and then a club gets a choice so basically just goes on where they finished in their standings so so bantam will be picked from the premier league standings which is the top one yep but then you, again they pick you but you don't get to play until you're 16 17. right okay. so you got to play in the lower grades which is your well now it's a and b grade okay yeah yeah right and were you were your first overall pick or where were you on the draft do you remember i was first overall for blackhawks that's for sure nice <laughs> no <laughs> clue where they finished yeah. at that time you were the conor bedard of your, yeah, exactly. your age group <laughs> like just a lock for number one yeah I love it. That's great. I had no idea they had drafts over there. Yeah, That's they have a draft. Cool. So they have a, obviously for the Bantams, they go into the, they're drafting for the Premier League, mm. but then also they also have like a C grade draft as well, which is coming okay. out of the ASL, which is the uh, Adelaide Summer League. So okay. all the adults. Yeah, to right. To get into the Winter League. Okay. And so you can do both while you're sort of, if you're in the AR, you can still play at that. Yeah. Like if you're if, sort of like a bubble in, guy, like if you're an in-between. Oh, no, no, you're both, if you, even if you're playing full-time minutes in AIHL, you can still play if okay. the coach lets you. Yep. And if you can afford the fees. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just willing to pay for it. Yeah. Exactly. Not cheap. With, was there oftentimes a clash between AI and then playing for the Blackhawks or, or were they always kind of structured? Not, a, not at that time when I was growing up. That was all weekend games. I wasn't of age to play AIHL, but they yep. put the Premier League on a Wednesday night instead. Yeah. Okay. So all those AIHL players can play in the local league. Oh, okay. That's brilliant. That's smart. So it makes it at least keeps it competitive and it's an extra nice time that we can pick up as well. Yeah, that is so good. So tell me about this Australian under 18 team, your first time away with them, uh, 2013. How was that experience? And uh, what was the lead up after you got selected for that team? It was a bit of a slog to get through all the like conditioning. It was like first time kind of being at that level. Mm -hmm. So it was having to adapt to that as well. It was very different. I was still playing Ford at that time as well. Um, and then getting there, even that, that first training camp that week long, two ice sessions a week like, and that a day on during that week yeah. it was horrible like it was a slug to get through what was the uh where did you stay at for training camp? uh we went to finland for the oh, first wow. one yeah okay so was that viramaki or somewhere else i believe it was I can't okay i remember now yeah but yeah we not far from helsinki which was that oh, was a beautiful city there. Yeah, nice. Going to watch some pro hockey in Finland, which was awesome. That's sick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who did you play in, like, the warm-up games, you remember? Or was it just some team that smoked was, you, like, Yeah, we played against the junior team for their Like a the Mestis team or yeah, something Mestis like that. Team, yeah, and we, oh, we got smoked. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even oh, fair. Dude, like, like, it wasn't yeah. even worth just, We should have just kept on training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, if you came into that uh, training camp with any sort of confidence, the second you the played second, that game, it just immediately dipped just in. You're like, oh, no. Us. Like, just their skating and then passing and even the hitting. It was just like, it was yeah. painful. No, no one gave them the memo that we were getting ready for a tournament. So no. they, they just went full tilt. There's no off switch, like, for them. It's just either, yeah, it's just go. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if they get, if they lose anything like less than 15 goals is probably like their coach would probably that's be a scared. Loss. Yeah, yeah they'll get back, coach scared, get back yeah. yeah yeah that's and a tough was, one. Uh, the tournament? that one was in serbia Serbia. yeah Ooh. belgrade serbia fantastic spot <laughs> Is it the same rink? Same rink, yeah. Oh, God. They've updated it now, that rink. Yeah, really? Yeah, it looks fantastic. Does it? Yeah. Okay. I saw, I saw some photos. Oh, okay, good. Finally. Finally, it was a... Oh, the change rooms are woeful. Like, it was a cold, like, almost like smelly rink. Like, it was yeah. old. And half the team was out with the illness, so we're already with a short really? bench. It was like, yeah. Like, like a just stomach bug? Or? Stomach bug going around oh, there. Dude. So we're just like... As the tournament went on, we're just like less and less players. Yeah. Like they physically couldn't play. Yeah. yeah. Holy hell. So it was like that first year was honestly a bit of a struggle for us. And we all, no, we did get relegated that year, I believe. Really? Yeah. Who was in your pool that year? What do we have? Uh, Serbia. What do we have? Belgium. Okay. I think, I can't even remember now who was in that pool. It was like the usual ones. I think yeah. it was Spain possibly gotcha. as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely was Spain as well. Okay. Yeah. The regular ones we usually play against. Yeah. Were you like 
kind of competitive that that year or was it just because the like you guys were depleted from the we'll sickness and stuff like we tried our best so like, those fair, teams fair. were just way above us gotcha. at that time yeah they we just went on their level like and then as the tournament went on we were dropping players so we got the time we got to our last game against i think it was belgium like a it was a winnable game mm. that was competitive we just we didn't have the legs yeah and so relegated then the next year back with the U18 again, and you're an assistant captain, leadership, speak to that. Like, you know, what, what were some of the characteristics that they chose you for that I, role? Look, I'm not sure. I'm not the most talkative person on a team. Not most of that, but I do lead by example on the ice. Yep. So yep. that's, I'm not the one to speak up, but I'll kind of show you my work ethic on the ice and mm. yep. lead that way. You'll slash people. Yes, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And so <laughs> that second year of playing U18, you higher up the the line rankings then? Like still playing forward, you weren't playing no, D was, that I be- I don't think about that. I think I was back on D for that one possibly. Okay. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So I was kind of jumping between the two at the time. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like to be able to go to world championships and play the forward or D. Yeah, just a Swiss army knife. Swiss army knife. Whatever, that time, whatever, yeah. whatever you need. Just, just put me out there. Yeah, I, I just, just want, want minutes. I just want ice time. I just want minutes. Yeah. You just didn't own the goal pads. That's yeah. the only reason why you weren't in the crease. Well, and then. <laughs> so where was that world championship your second time with U18? That one would have been, I think it was in Bulgaria. That one is Sofia, Bulgaria. So again, another very interesting. Like, yep. They had this ring. Had I think had nightclubs above the. Uh, really? The no way. They had guard dogs at the front that could actually sense gypsies. So you could walk really? up. Yeah. So you could walk up. The dog wouldn't bark at you. Wouldn't wouldn't care. Like, look here, gypsies walk past. They would go nuts. No I actually, way. I do wonder how they actually train that into a dog. Yeah, dog. That is hard. Hard. like we we're Ow. curious. Like, oh, why do they got dogs? Like the dogs just walking through the rink. I was like, guard Get dog, and then yeah, down. gypsy would walk past and chase them off. <laughs> that is crazy, man. That is yeah, nuts. That's yeah, it was. It was that's funny. intense. Yeah. And so that world championship, how'd you guys go? Like relegated down, so different teams in that one, but. Come through with a big win? Come through with a big win. I think we lost one game and that was to the home country. It was against Bulgaria. Yep. That was a tough team to beat. They were almost like men. Yeah, I was going to say, huge, like they're, they're units. Very they're strong, absolute like, units. Loud crowd that was, oh, they were yelling at us. Like, wow, you know, they're basically yeah. yelling abuse like, at abuse. us. Abuse, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we don't know what they're saying, no, but then. It wasn't, it wasn't friendly. One of the players, I think, I don't know who it was, one of the players turned back, I think, flipped in the bird, and then they got even louder again. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Getting into this it. Is where, as, as an assistant captain, you look at him, yeah. you go, hey, man, don't ever do that again, because I want to get home yeah, safely. Exactly. Like, get honestly, safely. like, we have a bus that says Team Australia, Team Australia. on it. <laughs> Like, even when we were there, we weren't allowed out of our accommodation. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. we're just like, you stay here. Yes. It has like soccer ovals, swimming pools. You don't go outside the gates. Yeah. So, it's yeah. confronting when you first like rock up to the hotel and there's like guards there with AKs and they're just like, that's just that's normal. just how standard life. operations. Yeah, standard. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it adds a, another level of kind of complexity to the whole trip and kind of yeah. like, you know, you really, like it all feels real. Like, it's, you know, it's definitely a little bit different to, uh, you know, playing the same team every, every week. Every week. To, <laughs> going to like this other country where like the fans are legitimate, have legitimate hatred for yeah. you and like want you to be hurt yeah, <laughs> at yeah. the end of it. Like they're happy every time you get crushed on the boards. Hey, Zach, so 2016 season, uh, I see you playing here for the CBR Braves. Like, talk me through how did that kind of transition happen from moving from the adrenaline to CBR? Uh, it was just due to our rink or having issues. Like, our ice was melting, we had leaks in the pipes. Uh, so at that, during that preseason, we had no ice. So we weren't training or we were training on the small ice. So I got a phone call from the uh, CBR Brave at the time. And they offered me to move over there, come play for them. Uh, Wasn't going to miss out on playing a season in the AI. So I jumped on board, moved over. And yeah. That's epic. Did anyone else from Adelaide move across to CBR as well? 
No, I was the only one. That you were the only over, one? Yeah. And you Number one one draft pick. this time? Uh, I would have been 20. Okay. That's so, awesome. so still yeah, a young buck. Yeah, 20, yeah. It was yeah. still a young buck then. So after playing so long with, you know, in Adelaide and with the adrenaline, what were the, some of the biggest changes and differences like playing for CBR? Uh, just the, the amount of trainings that you get. So you're, on, you're in the gym twice a week. You're on the ice twice a week. So you're always around the team. So it's good bonding. Uh, just the overall how the team was run as well at that time was a lot better and a lot more organized. A lot of the boys were buying into the buying into it as well, which well we ended up uh, unfortunately losing in the grand final. But it was a good season. It was a good mm. getting an idea of what a team should be like. Yeah. And well, who who on that team? Did you sort of gravitate towards? Were there anyone that you sort of crossed paths with from a U eighteen, U twenty team, or was there you know someone else? Yeah, sort of like- I was living with a bunch of the Queensland guys that moved over as well. Okay. So it was uh, Mitch Henning, Luke Moore. Okay, uh, there yeah. was a bunch of the imports as well that were living in a house. I think it was almost eight of us in a house. Wow. Yeah, so it was good that was, fun. That was yeah. the party house. That was the, for the it team. was the party house of the yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we always had some good nights there. That's unreal. Yeah. But you ended up uh, coming back to Adelaide after that season. You didn't want to stick around in the uh, Canberra Cove? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, well, I went back after the season uh, to stay in Adelaide, see family, um, get out of the cold. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, I got offered a job at Power Play Sports at the time. And I wasn't just going to turn down a job, move back. Well, in Canberra, I didn't have a job at the time. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't going to turn down having an income and then joining back in Adelaide was kind of what I wanted to do. And that is did they have the AJ running at that point where the generals yes. just started then? So yeah, the generals uh, after that first season of the Div 2 mm. were into the season for the, the following summer okay. as well. So I got yeah. to jump on board with that. And like you're at this like sort of like early 20s sort of age, the decision to not go overseas was that a conscious decision or was it more you didn't have an opportunity to go over? You had your, your dad that's gone over to Canada. Was yeah. there a specific reason why you didn't take that route? It was just more affordability. Yeah. I, it was going to cost a lot of money to go over there. I could have done high school, but again, that was, that was going to be big, way commitment, too, big yeah. commitment, way too much money. Uh, and you're not guaranteed to go anywhere. Anyway, yeah. so it's like also I had two younger brothers, so money was tight so you yeah. can't just spend whatever like 30 to 60 grand on yeah, going to school for one year yeah so i guess the canberra thing was like yeah so like it's like, kind of a similar thing right exactly you move away right. from home you know you move away you know, from home for a little bit you like, kind of gain that experience like living out of home which was yeah. nice yeah and would like the the canberra fans how were they when when you played there like did you did you enjoy that atmosphere every weekend yeah that was it was nuts yeah like, it was unbelievably yeah like, it was intense. Like you're walking in there, the building's almost shaking yeah. with how loud they are. They're also a very friendly crowd. Yeah. 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 When you're on their side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You, well, you've got to experience both both sides yeah. of the coin, right? Like your enemy and now uh, like someone that they're supporting. So, I mean, power play. Talk to me about you starting there. That's awesome. Like I started working at a hockey shop kind of, you know, after I'd finished my time with AI, but... That must have been so good, like right in the middle with all the brands, all the gear, and you know you always need more gear as a hockey player. So was there definitely some uh, perks of working at Power Play? Oh, there's definitely perks of working at Power Play at that age. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gear's expensive, and uh, I was definitely going to take that opportunity. And it was good, uh, good fun learning about it all. And so, did you come into Power Play and you just started as like a casual, or was that a straight into a full time position? Like, no, I uh, started off as a casual at the time. We only had a smaller, like, Power Play was only a smaller shop inside the rink. Um, but went more full time once it expanded into the uh, bigger location with the inline rink. Yeah. Oh, that's epic. So, just a bit of backstory with Power Play. So, a lot of you might know this already, but uh, Skaters Network. In the background, the company behind that is Adlon Trading, and they've been the Australian distributor of Bauer uh, for forever now. And so they've always supplied PowerPlay with the Bauer gear that they've had in store. Um, and then fast forward to now, um, 
skaters or well, Adlon has actually purchased PowerPlay and now that PowerPlay store has transitioned into a skaters network store that's now back in the rink, which is awesome. And Zach, you are our head man. You are the manager down yeah, there. I am the man. <laughs> So, I mean, how was it uh, like kind of splitting your time bef- between like working at the rink, in the store, playing AI? You must have just been surrounded by hockey the whole time. Pretty much the whole winter is just hockey. So, go to work, pretty much finish work, back on the ice, go home, then just keep repeating that every night. <laughs> and then on the weekends as well, you're going away with a AIHL and then you come back on a Monday early flight, then straight back into work. So it's just constant, rat, just, just the ultimate, ultimate ring, ring rat. Rat, just constant hockey. Yeah. You know, what is the worst part about that is taking teammate skates back to the store. I to refuse sharpen to. Them. <laughs> really? You put in that rule? Yeah. That's the After best practice. One. They can bring it up to me, but I refuse to take it. Man, good man. Cause yeah. I know I've been asked a few times and uh, I, I meet them halfway. I say, just give me the blades. If they don't yeah. come off, then I'm not, I'm not sharp. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's like, I'm, I'll be, I say, I got, I'm upstairs in five minutes. If your skates aren't there, bad luck. You can bring them in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all of your AI teammates, who is the most finicky about his sharpens? Oh, I don't know. We got a lot of lazy people on our team that don't get their skates sharpened. Yeah. Like you would have to, ask them they bring their blades in and I'm, it's it's a disaster <laughs> they have to sit there grinding the steels down just to get them perfect oh my god they yeah. look like they've been tap dancing on the yeah. sand and stuff like that well it doesn't help there's probably all the concrete on our benches at the rink <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that's a real thing i've been hit by that it it's there's definitely concrete there yeah there is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've had that problem. It's like walking because our change room's behind the bench and there's only a small mat and you've kind of got to take one wrong step, concrete. Oh. So it's just turn back around, change the steels, back out again. Oh, so this is what I want to ask you. Eighth season in the AIHL now, how do you think the league has changed since the beginning, like when you first started coming up and playing with the adrenaline? Oh, I think it's grown like, well, obviously we've got more teams now. Uh, but overall, I don't think it's changed that much apart from the playing style with a lot of more of this younger generation that's very much more skill. Um, other than that, it's still kind of the same AIHL, to be honest. When you're looking around it, are you seeing that a lot more teams are more kind of inclusive with getting younger players in and actually like giving them better ice time than maybe what you saw when you were, you know, first breaking in? Definitely seeing that a lot more like amongst the teams. It, Teams are looking younger, which is good, allowing kids to come out and train. Some of them having more of a development program as well to be able to have that stepping stone, uh, which is what most teams need. But it is a big jump going from your, you know, your Bantams or AJ to AIHL. Yeah, I think, I think that that's a huge one because, you know, you can be the best in Bantams, best in midgets, mm-hmm. and then I'm not saying I was the best in midgets, but I've seen it happen. Yeah. But then stepping up to AI, it's like a totally different ball game and it's kind of it like did. it's just all on you to put it in the net. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of people drop off. They were that, that kid that were best in that under-18 age group, but come up to AI and then they've kind of dropped off and just kind of stayed in that local league. And I guess because we, we've all felt it, like you really have to like recommit and lock back in once you're in the door to AIHL. Yeah. Whereas like you're not getting that ice time anymore, but you have to just then start again. Like yeah. you're at the bottom of the ladder and you just got to try and keep working up for some uh, quicker than others to climb that ladder. Brian Fins. Brian Fins. <laughs> yeah, look, like I, I had I had my little stumbles along the way. You know, oh, I, I, I didn't I didn't get into the league until I was probably like 21. So I definitely had to. Um, crawl my way up into a position there but do you, uh, do you feel like the aj helps with that sort of in between transition for def- the guys that don't get to go overseas yeah it definitely does it allows, it allows uh, players who don't really get seen mm. say for even oz team like selections they get to put themselves out there there's some people that are pretty good amongst their states but can't always go away to those national championships can't afford it so it allows them to get out there or they can't get onto AIHL team. And do you like the format of it being during the summer? Do you think that that, that plays in its favor um, and it has such few teams? Or is there a way that they can sort of improve it to make it a better stepping stone? For I think I players? definitely liked it being during the summer. It was something extra to continue with hockey instead mm. of just going full stop like 
no yeah. hockey. I'm guessing the summer hockey wasn't great over there. No, we had no yeah. summer hockey in Adelaide. Okay. So pretty much if we weren't finding our own training slots, we had nothing. Like It was basically yeah, right. you just put your gear away, that's it. No way. And oh. so was there a huge emphasis like within those kind of like top guys in the Adelaide region that they were doing a lot of off ice or that were they like kind of – getting more time by roller hockey, street hockey, or like, it, was that the pathway to kind of get more time? There were some people that took the, uh, or still do take the roller hockey route to get some, just more time, like with stick and puck. Uh, a lot of us were, like I said, like training with Sammy, we're doing off ice and on ice, uh, pushing ourselves. So that was like a two hour, like two hours on a Monday. So it was off ice beforehand, on ice then, and that would just constantly go through the summer. Yeah, right. Yeah. So when, when did you feel like you um, started to get comfortable within the league? Like you were starting to get regular minutes. You were getting comfortable with your role within the team. You were like, you know, the coach started to look to yeah. you as to be that person to lean on. How, when did you feel like, okay, like I'm, I'm here? I feel like it was only last year, to be yeah, honest. Right. Like to, to build that confidence like, and – kind of get those more minutes and be more relied on to kind of lead the younger or like as a D pair and go with the younger guy and mm. help him out. Like it does take some time for you to get comfortable in this league. Yeah. It is because it is a huge jump. Yeah. And when, what was your like welcome to the league moment where, where you, maybe you were um, paired up against someone that was like a top end import or did you get like absolutely crushed in one game? Where uh, it was like, Oh wow. Like, <sighs> This is another level. I can't remember who it was. Who it was. <laughs> it was one of the Ice Dogs imports. He was one of the like fighters. Like for, I can't remember. Do you know the year? I might be uh, able to figure. I oh, know. I can't remember the year. Oh, but he Derek like Campbell, in Adelaide. He, uh, we're in Adelaide, and he just I was carrying the park up the wall, and he just absolutely poleaxed me. Yeah. And that's when I really felt it. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, oh my god! Like this is playing as adult was, hockey. As he was staring <laughs> yeah, up into the just, room, like. like what was, what was that? What was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that put was... the truck out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who's who's one of your, like, out of the last, like, you know, in your AI career, who was, like, one of your favorite D partners to sort of play with? Uh, still, like, probably my one of my favorite would definitely be playing with Josh, Josh Harding and David Huxley. Uh, they're just so calm with the park. They've got great advice. And that just makes you feel more comfortable on the ice as well. Feel a bit more confident. And great locker room guys. Great too. locker room guys. Uh, Got to be careful around them. You can say nothing and all of a sudden you're getting chirped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. breathe the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lethal change room back yeah. then. Yeah, 100%. And so what do, you, what do you think, Zach, like looking back on all your time in AI, is there something that you would have told yourself like on that first season like some words of advice that would have helped you progress faster or get to a point? Hit the gym harder and just focus. <laughs> get stronger. That's uh, yep. basically what my advice would be to my younger self. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's epic. Yeah. I mean, like the, the fact that you were – you had Team Boyle for the <laughs> All-Star game. What year was it? That, is it 2018? 2018, yeah. 2018, so yeah, you're a two-time All-Star. Two-time All-Star, yeah. That, that, that feels kind of nice too. That's it. Yeah. That, that's a Want nice little... some money little... from it as yeah, well? Yeah. I feel like we need to bring that back. I think so what too. Was the, I think... uh, what was the bag back then? What, what, how much money did you get for that one? Well, we split it amongst everyone. Like It was meant to be the winning team that first year. Yeah. And we just kind of went to everyone like, no, nah, we just we'll take we'll just share it. Everyone got a piece of the cheese I mean, that year, I think. There's a few hundred dollars that you that got, which great. is nice. That is great. Yeah. And yeah. then whatever yeah. anyone else won for, you know, harder shot or faster skater, they got that on top. Look at that. See that bond you that's, get. That's you know, beautiful. That's essay. That's right beautiful. And then the league that's... didn't appreciate that, so the next year they didn't allow us to do it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is that why yeah. yeah. they got wind of it? Yeah, they got Come wind of it. And they're like, nah, dude. Come on. Winning team gets it. Yeah. And what about like when you went into the uh, you making the national team? I think that was the year we went to we went to Serbia, Serbia. Yeah. Yep. So you got to revisit Serbia. Yeah, I've been there a lot of times. And now. like how like like I remember like getting that that email, the phone call, saying that you finally made the the national team. 
how, how did that feel and what was your sort of mindset going into that tournament? Because I only like saw you, you know, we were teammates that year, but yeah. how, how did it feel being like that rookie coming in for that first year? It was definitely a weird feeling. Like obviously we've played against each other, but we've never been on, like all of us have never been on the same team. So it was kind of getting to know everyone. You're kind of that little bit of outcast at the start yeah. like, until you kind of find your, your foot, footing. Yeah. Uh, but it, I, it was a great feeling getting that call. I knew I wasn't going to get much ice time in that mm. tournament. Yeah. Like we had a pretty stacked team that year. Yeah. And like, I thought you played Unreal, like, mm. personally. Um, how, like, do you like playing that just purely offensive style of, of, um, of defense? Or are you, are you adapting? Are you adding more tools to the belt, yeah. I should say? I'm definitely, like, this year, as my main focus is be more defensively sound. Yep. And really focus on the quick passes out, the smart decisions and then also just being that making sure we don't get scored on yeah so i'm really trying to improve that on my game now yeah i know i got the offense but now i need the defense yeah gotcha yeah 2022 season zach you head to the melbourne ice talk me through that one and not the phl no not the phl so i got we we're trying to push for the adrenaline to go ahead but then obviously the aihl decided to well the adrenaline decided not to go ahead and then yeah. Avalanche for going to play. I got got offered to play for the uh, in the PHL, but... As you should. Yeah, as I should. Um, but yeah, we had also was kind of... I was shopping around for teams yeah. to play for because it was kind of that went out that possibly not me able to make the national team was uh, one of the things. Oh, uh, yeah, there was that little weird... So caveat. I was kind of... The caveat, yeah, the start of the season. So I was like, oh... Better find a team because that's kind of the ultimate goal is to play for your country. Mm -hmm. um, so it was either Canberra again or the Melbourne Ice. So I just went with the Melbourne Ice that season. They were a young team. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you could have won a cup. Could have won a cup. I, uh... wow. <laughs> so I mean, I made, a, <laughs> made a rough decision there, but it was a good fun season playing with them. I mean, what was it like playing uh, for Melbourne? Because, I mean, they've got a reputation of being a, a pretty well put together organization. Uh, everything kind of is put in place for, for success. How was it? Did you find it, the success? No, there was no success that year. <laughs> they were almost, almost a rebuild that year. Uh, the team very wasn't, team, they're a very young team. team. A lot like Tommy Power wasn't playing, Armstrong was at the Mustangs. Uh, so Webby was, was out too. Webby was out. He was playing for the Ducks that year. That's right. Yeah. A lot of the. Carpenter as well, he was yeah. out. So there was a lot of spots missing on that team where there was a lot of young guys that had to make the call up that just weren't ready. Mm. Uh, we did get a couple of wins that year, but it was an absolute grind. How, how did you think kind of coaching played into that with having such a young team? Was it kind of very kind of driven towards the rebuild or was it supportive in that or was it kind of like just every week was just I feel a like bit it of a was mission? Kind of, let's get through this year. Let's get through this year. See how, see what happens. Uh, like they, I feel like a lot of the coaches, they like a lot of the players, they weren't going to be playing again the next year. Yeah. So I feel like their mind was all right. Let's get through this year. See what we can do, rebuild next year. Yeah. And also, also first year or first time doing the fly in fly, fly out, out situation, yes, that's correct, situation yeah. as opposed to Canberra where you were had a spot settled there was. Uh, was that just based on the offer that they gave to you or did they give you an opportunity for you to live there? Or was it just because you had your, uh, your life set up in, in Adelaide? I had my life. They did give me opportunity to move there, but I had my life set up in Adelaide. And mm. I was not interested in moving states again. Yeah. How is it doing fly in, fly out for weekends? Because I feel I, like that'd be an extra slog. It was very much of an extra slog. It was uh, you're getting in late on a Friday night. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing on the Saturday, uh, so you to get there having to get a good night's sleep otherwise yeah. you're flying on the saturday risking missing flights at that stage as well with that yeah. seat last year being yeah it was all chaos well, with the flights very and stuff. much chaos yeah bags gone missing and everything like that um so having to fly out the night before so i'm leaving work pretty much straight away jetting out Dude. so it was a yeah it was a busy year yeah racking up the uh frequent flyer points <laughs> I mean, and you were racking up points on the board too. Yeah, I mean, you got to rack up points you, you somewhere. Had, you, you had to, I saw your stat sheet. You got yeah, the, you I got know, a few. There was, yeah. a little, there was a little bump up in the 
in the Melbourne ice years. Yeah, exactly. A year, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Now back to the adrenaline. Twenty three season. How's it all going uh, this far into the uh, into the run? We've had a bit of a, a rough season so far. Like we've been very hit with the injury bug. So everyone's out with shoulder injuries. Uh, we've had change of imports halfway through the season. Uh, once we could uh, sign some different ones that were a bit more of a higher caliber that were going to bring our team up. Uh, so it's kind of all over the place. All the boys obviously played in the for the Avalanche last year, so it's a bit of a funny feeling at the moment. So the people who don't know where they kind of stand, I think, as well. So Zach, we've been talking about it, but you know, you are now the uh, Skaters Network Adelaide manager, first one that we've ever had. Um, how's that transition back into the rink been, and has there been a positive kind of response from the hockey community down there? Yeah, it's been a very, very positive. They're, all the customers have been happy. They're always talking about how nice it is to have it back at the rink. It's easy for them, even though it was only five minutes down the road <laughs> for a lot of them. <laughs> um, it's the little things. It's the little things. Yeah, there's a lot of appreciation from even the figure skaters now that we have figure skating back as well. Uh, but it's been a real quick turnaround the past like few weeks to get that shop set up within a week and then Lee coming down as well to kind of help me get set up and comfortable in running the shop. I mean, you guys got it done in a very small amount of time, yeah. like from no shop to shop set up and then gear coming in. Like, was that a big task? Like, was there a lot of late nights going into that one? Uh, long days, to be honest, early starts and then getting, you know, finish was lugging up all the slat wall up the stairs. So it was, it was a hard day, <laughs> sweating our butts off. <laughs> and you've also got you've got a stick studio in there so you've got a range of sticks for everyone to try out yeah. when they come down definitely we've got the vapor and the nexus so come down pick one we'll be able to help you out and rip some pucks which one are you are you vapor nexus i don't know i'm you? undecided we're shooting some pucks so i might have to change give the uh, nexus a go yeah i think so I yeah you guys H5000 could be. I mean, you had a little bit of a comp with. Uh, we did play three posts. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a very even game there. We might have to have a rematch uh, uh, on the video. Illegal you stick. Never know. Uh, <laughs> it was no illegal, illegal curve. curve. Yeah. The, uh, that's, that's for might another have to episode. Get the rule book out here. The Cobra. The Cobra, <laughs> yes. Well, Zach, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Uh, we're stoked to have you on board as, uh, you know, Skaters Network Adelaide manager and uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the season with you, Thanks for having me, guys.